Do you want to create stylized environments in Blender? Well, here's five tips to help you get started because I've been creating a lot lately for my short film. Let's dive in. All right, so my first recommendation is to really lean into custom brushes. Whether these are brushes that you've made yourself with the new brush add-on that I cover in this tutorial, or if you want to go ahead and buy brush packs, there are tons on Blender Market, but I was heavily reliant on all these custom brushes for adding some kind of quick stylized options to my various models, props, and characters that I was creating within my scenes. I definitely recommend checking out a universal material for your scenes. What do I mean by that? Well, it takes a long time to go through and texture large environments like this. So what you can do is find kind of a universal material and just focus on kind of texture painting your base color and thus saving yourself a lot of time. For example, back on these hills here, I'm just using this fabric cotton, which I use in a lot of my other scenes as well for the ground material. And by having these simple materials, I can focus on just getting some good colors in there and letting these universal shaders kind of do the rest. If you check Blender Market, there's a lot of great options, things like printed materials, tune shaders, or this cool clay dome material as well. Of course, there's also my own asset pack if you're interested in that. My dynamic VFX pack is now on sale at Blender Market, and this has completely customizable VFX assets that you can drag and drop right into your viewport, both EV and Cycles compatible. If you're interested, you can also go check out a free sample pack. Also, if you're interested in my Patreon, I have materials, projects, time lapses, video walkthroughs, and discounts available there as well. Now, one thing I love is utilizing lattice modifiers. Let's take a look at this bed right here. Now, by utilizing lattice modifiers, you can quickly adjust geometry without having to do any complex modeling or textures. So here you can see I've put a lattice modifier on this object and that it's just kind of tweaking the bed a bit and taking it from kind of a normal bed to kind of just a cartoony exaggerated bed. This is also something that I did in the opening shot of my short film when I kind of go through the castle and I've kind of distorted the castle in order to give it kind of a cartoony bent look, which would have been very difficult to model on its own. Coming back into the scene here, you can see that I'm also utilizing the previous tip by using this wooden shader repetitively throughout to kind of quickly texture these and maintain style across the scene. For this next one, consider using fake fog or other environmental effects to get more control over your scene and reduce render times. Check out this scene right here. As it rotates and we shift focus, we see that the cave looks like it goes on to an endless amount with a very controlled variance over the color as it goes from dark blue to this kind of light teal color. And the way I did that is there is a fog in the scene, but I could not get the look I wanted. So you'll see here that these are actually all sharing a shader with a color ramp that's plugged into the emission. So what I did is actually just control the color to kind of create that color fall off that I wanted visually, thus giving me kind of a stylized foggy look without the need for actual fog to create. I wanna encourage you just to kit bash your scenes. What is kit bashing? Well, it means kind of getting these model kits and bashing them together to create a new scene. So you can see here that I have created my character here, but I'm actually utilizing a lot of elements from other asset packs. This right here is an environmental asset pack. The rocks are their own asset pack. The fabric here is my own asset pack, as is the button. And then the flowers here are from cgtrader.com. So what I do is focus on the hero elements and then kit bash the rest of your scene. Now kit bashing can be kind of hard when you're trying to do a stylized environment. So you need to be a bit careful when you're picking kits to ensure that they won't break the look you're going for. Luckily, websites like Blender Market have tons of options, and as long as they're in the background, they shouldn't necessarily be too visible to cause an issue. Next up, I'd like to encourage you to limit your color palette. Check out the color palette I have here. You can see that I have dark shades of blue with a graduated fade off, but there aren't many colors in the scene. By limiting your colors, you can kind of pull yourself away from realism and push yourself into the stylistic realm. A great example of this is in Deco's short film where there's all these beautiful purples and reds, and he created this in Blender if you want to check that out. Now, reference is king when it comes to creating stylized assets, basing things off reality and exaggerating those things, but some of the places I like to get reference images are Pexels, which are royalty-free images, so you don't really have to worry if you accidentally make something a little too similar, but it's great for generating colors and horizon lines and things like that, good compositions to reference. 
Also checking out like something like Mid Journey. Now I know AI is a bit controversial right now, but they do have a showcase if you don't want to participate, but just want to use it as a reference library. If you prefer to just avoid AI art altogether, definitely recommend ArtStation or Dribble to kind of create references and see what some other artists are doing that might help inspire you. Now, what do you do once you've gathered all those reference images? Well, I recommend PureRef. This allows you to drag all your images in here to auto size them, auto scale them, play with the opacity and more. It works on all platforms. And it's just a really strong tool for creating mood boards and art boards. 